Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to address the question what's better Airtable or Google Sheets and Excel and I get this question asked a lot so I wanted to address this step by step and compare both in different situations right so yeah let's jump in the video here we have an example of the tables uh, you can create an Airtable as you can see we have the leads and here are just randomly generated leads and we're doing the same here on, on Google Sheets. And we're starting with the fields. As you can see, the fields are the parts on the top and usually on the top here. But here is just a normal row. On Airtable, we will actually have the fields which you can pretty much customize. As you can see, when you add a field, it asks you what kind of data will you be putting inside of there, you know? And you can add formulas as you can do on Google Sheets. Um, you can add long text, uh, users, dates, single select. This is a pretty big one that you can add options like I have right here on city, San Diego, Chicago, New York, deal status, close, negotiating, etc. This is pretty, pretty cool. But in Google Sheets, you are limited to just customizing the the rows just with um just with a currency and dates that's all you can pretty much do here at Airtable you can actually get more creative and custom with the fields number two Airtable has linked fields so let's say I want to link uh, the main view which is the name view with the companies okay so we're gonna link this to companies and we're just gonna click name of the company okay it's going to add, like, let's say I have another company, right? Let's say it's X Industries and Tesla. Let's say Alex Rivera works at Tesla. So we're just going to add Tesla and we're going to add, te let's say Jordan also works at Tesla, but um, Sam works at Tesla and X Industries. We can add both of them. So Casey works at Tesla and he works at X Industries. And this is pretty insane. You can actually delete this field. This is pretty insane because you can actually see who works at Tesla. And when you go to companies, you can go here. And as you can see, main, you can see all the people that work in this company. So this is a pretty big function that Google Sheet doesn't, doesn't let you do. Uh, I would have to create a new company staff and actually put the names over and over again. And, and yeah, for, if I, let's say I want information about a company, I can just click here and I don't need to go back between back and forth between tables, right? So I have all the information in the company in one place. Now we're going to go over how to display your data and Airtable, you have your views, which you can bit, get pretty custom with. You have the grid, you have the calendar, you have the gallery, and you can get pretty customized on how you want to view your, your, your data, right? You can even add forms, which code you're, we're gonna go over with in a few seconds, but yeah, you can actually view your data in different manners and actually manipulate it at the same time, you know? So let's say the stages for the negotiation, as you can see, stages, deal status, negotiating, negotiating, close, proposal, sent. So you can actually view it as, you can actually view it as it progresses. So let's say you're negotiating with Jordan Lee and you end up closing Jordan. You can just move it right here. It will change in your view. As you can see right here, you, let's say you close all of these three people, but for some reason it got, uh, held back so it's in progress and you can see in progress right here so yeah you, for the views you, it's so much more comfortable in Airtable but if you're using Google Sheet you will need to change this to closed or you would you would need to add uh, insert uh, drop down and add that the actual options and you can do this too. It's pretty much the same thing as Airtable with the with the single selects, but the fact that you can actually view it in a in a Kanban in a gallery, even in a graph, it's I think that plays a big part when analyzing large amounts of data. Okay, guys. Now we gotta talk about filters. 
the fact that you can actually filter your fields pretty easily where with added conditions like legal status is and closed you can see just the closed people or you can change this to whatever you want it's in progress if it's any off it's pretty cool you can get pretty creative with this and i believe sheets and excel also have this function but of course it's it's more complex to set up and you can't really get creative so for example i just want to create a new table to only view the the closed uh the person i just closed i just a deal status is closed and i don't need to see this here and when you're managing a lot of data this is pretty helpful but if uh, if you're here in Google Sheets, you would need to set up a filter to deal status and, you know, set up this filter and that a filter, filter by condition and text is exactly. And you, you, you need to set this up in a, in a more complex way. And it takes more time to set up. But for example, here, I just can create another grid and set up another filter, which is pretty cool and pretty useful as well. Okay, now we're going to talk about simplicity and when we're talking about large counts of data in Airtable, you can just create a new table and add up to a hundred, about 100,000 rows. But in Google Sheet, you can add millions of rows. I believe it's 5 million the max. So yeah, when we're talking about large, large, large uh, portions of data, in Airtable, you can only store about 100 to 200,000 and in Sheets, you can store up to 5 million. The next part is a big, big, big part uh, here in Airtable. The fact that you can automate many different tasks. So let's say when a record status is set to, to closed, we want to automate a process and send an email, you know. An Airtable is pretty simple and easy to do it, and you can do it inside of Airtable. And there's a lot, a lot of things you can do it with it. You can run a script and send a webhook. You can do a lot of stuff without having to leave Airtable, which is a pretty, pretty big part. But when we're talking about Google Sheets, you will need to set up a script so that every time you modify status or something like that, it actually sends a webhook. Or you can just uh, to to make that calm or or sap here, and you can build up automation outside of Google Sheets. But now we're gonna talk about forms, which is inside of Airtable interfaces. You can create forms on Airtable that go directly to your data. So let's say I want to collect my an email list, you know, and I I and I, and I set this up for my clients to fill it up. I can just send them this link directly from Airtable, they will submit the information. This is more for onboarding or stuff like that. And the information is gonna go right through here and to to the to the to the same table I shared or created the form in, you know? And if we talk in about Google Sheets, you will need to create a Google form and then link it over to the Google Sheet. We just it just takes more time but it's pretty much the same thing because it's in the same software so it's on Google Drive. But yeah, now we're also going to be talking about Airtable interfaces and the fact that you can build literal, literal apps inside of Airtable um, for your clients or to display data. And as for Google Sheets, you can actually display your data and create uh, data tables. As you can see right here, you can create data tables, but they're like, you, you can't send this thing to your client unless you use extensions to make it look better and in a more presentable way but you can do that in with Airtable interfaces you can literally click share and it will share a link so that your clients can view their reports so that you can see your accounting and the fact that you can also work directly through the interfaces so you can add records to interfaces you can do a lot of stuff this is an example of an interface I built with this uh, with this Airtable tool. So I made a blog post generator where you can actually interact with it right here. Imagine sending this something like this to your clients and they can just review and publish the blogs right here. And it's a functional, functional 
soft, little software that you can send and even sell for a lot, a lot of money. And as you can see in, in Google Sheets, you would need to send the Google Sheet, with those, which doesn't look as good as it would on Airtable. I compare this to this, and it's not, it's not great, you know? Okay, now we're gonna talk about a little bit about pricing. Most of the features are available on the free plan, but if you wanna do automations and stuff like that, like more complex, you would need to switch to the team plan, which is 20 bucks a month. As for the price, uh, Google Sheets takes a win because you can basically build whatever you want for free, right? So yeah, guys, in conclusion, I think Airtable is way, way better for businesses and Sheets is better for people that are looking to store large, large amounts of data. But when we're talking about manipulating your storage and actually showing it to people and making it functional, I believe Airtable is way, way, way better. So yeah, guys, that was pretty much it for today's video. That's the question solved which is better for business. In my opinion, it's Airtable 100%. If you wanna sign up to Airtable, the link is down below in the description. Subscribe, like, whatever.